People's Liberation Army sends out destroyers while the U.S. Navy does exercises nearby. People in Shanghai say they're starving under COVID lockdowns. And the most absurd Chinese Tesla knockoff. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Matt Ganesda, filling in today for Chris Chapel. This episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. Having a PC means dealing with constant crashes and hardware failures. You know what I'm talking about. That's why you need PC Doctor Toolbox. I'll explain more at the end. So, off the coast of China this week, the Chinese Navy gathered its most powerful destroyers while a U.S. carrier group was holding exercises with Japan off the Korean Peninsula. China sent four of its Type 055 Zhenhai-class guided missile destroyers to the waters near Qingdao. Defense analyst H.I. Sutton posted this on Twitter, showing satellite images of the ships. The Type 055 is China's most powerful destroyer. They've built eight of them in just the past few years. Now, China didn't officially say they were sending destroyers because of the U.S.-Japan joint naval exercises, which is good because those exercises weren't even about China. They were about North Korea. It's like when a coworker you hate starts arguing with another coworker you hate. But instead of being happy that they're fighting each other, you send four of your most advanced destroyers. So in economic news, China's imports unexpectedly collapsed in March, while exports grew. China's customs spokesman Li Kui Wen blamed this on some unexpected sudden factors in the current international and domestic environments. This is not good for the U.S. Two years ago, China had signed an agreement to reduce the massive trade imbalance. The idea was that U.S.-China trade should not just be about China getting to export its cheap stuff to the U.S., but that American companies should also be able to make more money selling stuff to China, too. But sometimes unexpected sudden factors just make it impossible for the Chinese Communist Party to keep its promises. U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi scheduled a visit to Taiwan last Sunday, the first Taiwan visit for a sitting U.S. Speaker since 1997. The Chinese regime heard about this and issued a stern warning. China's foreign ministry spokesperson told reporters that if the United States insists on having its own way, China will take strong measures in response to defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity. All possible consequences that arise from this will be completely borne by the U.S. side. So did Pelosi back down to appease the Chinese regime, or did she bravely stand up for Taiwan? Neither. She responded, by getting COVID and postponing her trip. Now that's how you play 3D chess. And after the break, do not go to Shanghai. Welcome back. There's nothing more embarrassing for a communist official than when someone tells the truth. But sadly, that's what happened recently when Chinese Vice Premier Sun Chunlan visited Shanghai. She had gone there to call for all-out efforts to curb the pandemic. But those all-out efforts apparently don't include making sure Shanghai's 26 million residents have enough food to eat. This video posted by a Shanghai resident shows her with a group of Chinese officials. And then residents yell about how they don't have any vegetables to eat. And Sun Chun Lun responded with silence. What did you think she was actually going to react? Anyway, Sun is used to being yelled at. Like back in 2020 when she toured Wuhan. Also, whenever Sun does a COVID inspection, it usually means that city hasn't locked down hard enough. So whenever Sun visits somewhere, get ready for more lockdowns. And Shanghai extended its lockdown once again. And the U.S. State Department has responded to Shanghai's extended lockdown by telling its consulate staff there, leave now. The reason the State Department gave was the rise in COVID cases and the Chinese government's arbitrary COVID rules. And that Shanghai totally sucks right now. Shanghai residents are getting pretty fed up with what's going on. And we're seeing more videos of residents protesting COVID policies, including clashing with police. Residents in one apartment complex protested after their apartment complex was turned into a quarantine site. They don't look super happy about that. But as videos and photos of this circulated online, 
they were quickly censored. Internet users posted images of the incident covered with red scribbles to avoid automated censorship. With people saying, if you delete this, I'll post again. I'll just post again. Here's another sign that Chinese people are just getting fed up with the Chinese Communist Party's censorship and propaganda. The Chinese Communist Party likes to manipulate trending topics on Chinese social media sites like Weibo. Here's one about how the U.S. is the country with the worst human rights. Everyone knows this is not actually trending. It's just a propaganda topic. And it's a transparent attempt to deflect people's anger towards the Chinese Communist Party by talking about how terrible America is. So, in the middle of the night, infuriated Chinese netizens use the fake trending hashtag about America's human rights to mock Chinese authorities instead. Here's someone sarcastically talking about how great China's COVID policies are. And another person brought up terrible human rights violations that were happening in China while pretending they were happening in America. For some reason, these comments weren't being censored. One person said this was the true voice of the people. Of course, the true voice of the people didn't last. Four hours later, everything was finally censored. But good news for all the angry Chinese citizens who are upset at China's COVID policies. The Chinese Communist Party is doubling down. The party's propaganda is making very clear that zero COVID is here to stay. Trying to live with the virus or a lie flat approach, which relies solely on vaccination instead of other prevention measures is not a choice for China. So the message to anyone in Shanghai or the many other cities that are in lockdown is suck it up. You're not going anywhere. And after the break, you'll never believe this Tesla knockoff in China. Welcome back. Last November, there were big protests in the Solomon Islands, mainly having to do with the corrupt government and its shady ties to China. At the time, Australia sent peacekeeping troops to maintain order. But this week, it was revealed that the Chinese regime had secretly requested its own heavily armed security team be sent to the Solomon Islands. The 10 person detail was to be armed with pistols, rifles, two machine guns, and a sniper rifle to protect the Chinese embassy. The Guardian was unable to confirm whether that Chinese security team actually arrived, but the document does reveal that China also offered riot equipment to the Solomon Islands government, including 1,500 of each of the following. Bulletproof vests, bulletproof armor plates, riot helmets, riot shields, stab-proof vests, electric batons, glare lights, tear gas spray, and first aid kits, as well as raincoats and uniforms. It's always nice when big corrupt regimes step in to help smaller corrupt leaders crack down on public protests. And finally, some good news. China continues to commit genocide and crimes against humanity, according to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Here's what he said on Tuesday. The Chinese government continues to commit genocide and crimes against humanity in Xinjiang, against predominantly Muslim Uyghurs, among other minority groups. Why do I say this is good news? Because it means the U.S. is officially calling out the Chinese regime for genocide. It comes as the U.S. released its annual human rights report for last year. And by specifically labeling what's happening in China as genocide, this gives the U.S. the political tools to do things like sanction Chinese officials and ban products imported from Xinjiang. Now, if only they could stop Tesla from setting up a showroom there. But maybe it balances out. Sure, China is putting millions of ethnic minorities in concentration camps, but at least they're driving zero emissions vehicles. Speaking of zero emissions, remember last month when China held those high-level two sessions meetings and said carbon neutrality was high on the agenda? Well, this may surprise you, but that was a lie. Because what China is actually doing is increasing its coal production and pushing its supposed carbon reduction plans further into the future where they can be safely ignored forever. So China is burning more coal and those coal-fired power plants are putting energy onto the grid, which China's elite are using to charge their Teslas. So Teslas in China are essentially burning coal. So speaking of Tesla, we've been repeatedly saying on China Uncensored, this is not going to end well for them. But I wouldn't be surprised if Elon Musk someday finds himself cursing China's sudden but inevitable betrayal. In 2018, Elon Musk set up a factory in China. Then in 2020, he announced he was setting up a design center in China too. I've personally said on our podcast that I believe China would soon knock off Tesla's designs. 
starting with electric car batteries and eventually the cars themselves. But I never expected them to knock off Elon Musk himself. I don't know how this happened, but it did. Because China. I tried to warn you, Elon. I tried. And this episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. Computer and software crashes, hardware failures, and general computer slowdowns are a more common occurrence than we all like to admit. And these issues can come up during the worst times, like during a business meeting or when you're filling in for Chris Chappell and everything keeps going wrong on the teleprompter. Anyway, if you're concerned about the health of your computer, use PC Doctor Toolbox. It helps you address system issues and can help you stop crashes before they happen. And we have a special 50% off discount just for China Uncensored viewers. Use the link and coupon code below to take advantage of this limited time offer. I'm Matt Ganezda. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.